Today's 4 Deep Sports Talk show is supported by PTU Clinic. Visit ptuclinic.com. Adria's Restaurant and Banquet Facility of East Bridgewater. For more information, their website is adriasrestaurant.net. And the Boston Athletic Academy at bostonathleticacademy.org. My bad there. Welcome to 40 Sports Talk on 1320 AM Radio. We have the web hockey team, West East Bridgewater Boys Hockey with us. Coach Derek, uh, just asked your last name. I want to repeat that one last time. It was about butcher yet again. Dorico. Dorico. Coach Mike Dorico with us. Anthony Patete is probably how you do not pronounce it, but uh, that's my best attempt at, at least. And then Sean Noonan is, of course, the easiest one to pronounce on that list. They are both the captains for this team. We will be going on with this interview at a little bit of a rough start right there. We are back into this. We will be all good now. Casey and Justin, you obviously have some questions prepared, as do I. Would you either you want to start this off? Uh, yeah, sure. So I have a question for the players. So do you have any memorable m- moments throughout the season? Um, some memorable moments? Um, definitely just, you know, coming to practice, like, what, four days a week, having the game in between, you know. Something really special with the boys, just a bond. It's amazing, you know. It's every day is special. <laughs> no, hundred percent. Okay, yeah. my bad. I was a little bit cloudy in the mind there for a second. Not realize the show is starting that quick. We have gathered ourselves now. We will be doing a lot better for this interview. I wanted to basically ask you guys, Coach. Obviously, last year was just East Bridgewater, I believe, that you coached. And that now, is correct. Yes. Now this year is a little bit of co-op with West Bridgewater. Wanted to ask how that transition from coaching just one team with a little bit of select players on it to coaching a team that has two different schools combining onto it. Well, the bottom line is we we needed the co-op to continue the ice hockey program at East Bridgewater High School. The numbers were starting to get low, and uh, we've been um, in the process of looking at co-op options for the last past uh, two years. Uh, When I was hired last November, uh, the talks really started to grow even more, so my athletic director and I got very involved. Uh, Pat Leonard, the athletic director at East Bridgewater High School, um, so we got really involved, and you know we were always hoping that the West Bridgewater High School program would work where the East Bridgewater and West Bridgewater girls had established a co-op, and we were really trying to make it uh, a one umbrella thing you know for, for boys and girls hockey at the two schools. And uh, we were successful at doing that. You know, we had to jump some, jump through some hoops and, and a couple of obstacles to overcome. Um, but eventually, uh, the Mayflower League, where the West Bridgewater players, you know, uh, participate in, and our South Shore League, uh, all voted on it eventually to uh, make sure that the co-op was established. And by the time it was established, which I believe was this past October, um, we were able to get these boys to. Um, get with one another uh and they united very quickly they bonded very quickly and uh we were off to a very very special start at the beginning uh record may not dictate that um but once we got past the first six games of the season these boys really turned it on and you know the rest is kind of history for the way the season went yeah no 100 even though you said the record doesn't dictate you guys got a winning season first year with a co-op that's pretty impressive to do very happy about that we were 0 12 last year um with with a shortened season because of because of covid yeah. and this year you know we started 0 5 and 1 um but there was fight there was spark uh we made some line adjustments throughout the first part of the season to really get things clicking and uh yeah, after that 05 and one um, start, you know they finished the season ten eight and three, um, and we went up and played uh, a tournament game just this past uh, Thursday night against a uh, extremely talented Shawshine Valley hockey team. And uh, these boys, they they battled right to the end. We lost in overtime, unfortunately, but uh, I couldn't be more proud. I couldn't be more proud. These kids really did a job together as one under two schools it was great no 100 percent. you just have to think the fact that you guys went winless last season you made the playoffs this season that's a massive win by itself you can't just go from that to winning a championship immediately you have to take the baby steps and you guys did that perfectly you guys huge baby step yeah massive baby step an adult step at that point a man step but you basically said that you started off 05 and 1 right so that means that you finished the season 10, 3, and 2. That's an amazing record. That's nothing to be ashamed of at all. You Not guys... ashamed one bit. I, I couldn't tell you how. You know, I've said it to these guys. I've said it to my family, and I've said it to my peers. I, I'm, I'm super proud of what this team did. You know, my coaching staff, uh, these boys, their parents, their families, 
um, just never gave up and, and believed in the season, even with a slow start. And uh, super proud, super proud. Yeah, I think one reason that the co-op team works so well is you have so many players who can play different roles on a team. I actually want to bring up Anthony. You played goalie last year, and now you're the leading scorer on the team. How was that adjustment between the two years? Uh, I mean, it was a big adjustment, but I mean, uh, uh, freshman year, um, I was still on the first line with a couple of my freshman buddies, and I re- after the goalie season, after a tough season, I just really wanted to have a really big year coming back, and uh, I think me playing with uh, Sean and uh, my other line mate, Jeff Young, really helped that, and we had a great season. Yeah, 100%. The fact that you can take on two such different roles and thrive in both of them is just amazing to see. That's crazy. Well, let me just add that if this boy doesn't step in net last year, we may not have a program last year. (laughs) And then we're not even talking co-op this year. So what this guy's done for this program um, is pretty special. And, you know, you really should be proud of yourself for that because – and I'll tell you, he saw about 50-plus shots a game last year and – his save percentage was pretty damn good. It was about 86%, <laughs> if, if I'm not mistaken. Dang. Um, he, got he got peppered. He got peppered. <laughs> and uh, he, he did a great job. And, and again, more importantly, it, it saved the program. It really was. It was a big reason that the program is still what it is. So. Yeah, everyone can win like a high school championship. But if you're able to save a program as your team, I feel like that's over winning a championship. It's saving an entire school's future. That's not just one singular game that you can look back on. Right. So how did that happen? By the way, this is Lucy Cabral <laughs> co-hosting here. Um, yeah, how did that happen? I mean, you were in the front line shooting goals, right? And, and you were a goalie. So basically, uh, we had two goalies before. One of them went to BC High, and uh, the other okay. one went to Bridgewater Random. And it was just, we, didn't, we don't really have any young goalies at the time we didn't. And it, at the time, it was also just East Bridgewater kids, so we really had to find something. And the last second, I was just like, you know, uh, I'll just try it out. You know, it's for the senior captains, Jack Perry and Gage Lonigan in uh, the 2019-2020 season. I couldn't let them not have a season. So, yeah, I mean, Anthony had a little experience as a youth goaltender, and I think that's <laughs> what sparked it a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I played a couple of games, like, when I was really younger, and I kind of liked it, so... I thought I'd just try it out again, and even with like a losing record and not having a win, it was still a fun experience. Yeah, it's funny to think that when you were a little kid playing in goal, you're probably thinking, I'm never going to be into doing this again. I'm never going to need this. You end up saving a whole season because of those couple of games right, in goal. Right. Fact. But the whole program. Yeah, would, you, would you talk about that being your memorable moment, like from being goalie to shooting uh, shots? Uh, what, what position did you go to? So I played this year I played center. Uh, with, again, oh. Sean Noonan and Jeff Young. And, uh, I mean, I'd say it, it's one of the memorable memorable moments, but, I mean, I think my memorable moment of the season was just winning that game to get into the tournament for the first time in, like, eight years. It was just a huge step for both schools, and especially East Bridgewater, who hasn't made it in a while. Like, I'd say, like, eight to ten years. No, yeah, you have to hold your head high after that for sure. That's just a major accomplishment. So I basically so, saw it. Oh, my oh that's issue. okay. No, no, that's okay. So who is in goalie now? Is it Braden? That, that's what I was about to bring up, Braden Bates. I yeah, want to ask you guys. Yeah. He's an eighth grader, right? Yeah. yeah. How has it been having an eighth grader, not even a high schooler on your team? Because obviously you have to coach up freshmen a good amount of the time, but has the whole team kind of crowded around, coached up that eighth grader, felt him as a family member now at this point? So because the two schools are junior, senior high schools, we have the ability to allow that grade as a participation grade. Um, we were very fortunate to have uh, not just Braden, but two other goaltenders uh, in the same grade um, show up to participate on the team this season. And we were able to um, develop you know, three goaltenders at the high school level. Uh, though Braden got the play in time, um, all 22 games, um, the other two boys, um, Jason Cabral and Brody Pack, both have now the learning experience under their belt moving forward. But uh, Braden's pretty special. He, um, we, we looked at him prior to the season. Uh, when I say we, I mean me. Um, <laughs> and, you know, noticed that he had a lot of uh, talent and ability that could possibly be worked with at the high school level. Um, and then when he showed up um, for, for tryout, well, we don't call them tryouts in a co-op, but when he showed up for practice and when we started getting the season going, um, he really has an unbelievable work ethic. Um, 
during practice, outside of practice. He, he participates on uh, a couple of other teams during the season because of his grade. He's able to play full season hockey uh, at the youth level and at the junior high level. Uh, so he gets a lot of he gets a lot of hockey, which is great. And when he started seeing pucks and when he started seeing shots from guys like Sean and Anthony and you know some of these other guys that can really bring it, um, his confidence grew. His confidence grew uh, tremendously, and he really just put a lot of work into making himself better for the team and the program. And because of that, we were able to be successful on the ice in front of him. And more importantly, he was able to keep us in games um, and ultimately, you know, get to the point we got to this season. So uh, it's an amazing accomplishment for somebody that age. And, and they do almost more than you expect them to do. Um, and I know Anthony feels great about that because <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have to go back yeah. in that net this year. But um, I, I think overall it's just his work ethic and, and we're extremely proud of him. And uh, we have a bright future in that position, a, a bright future, because, um, like I said, we have the other two boys and uh, wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing some of the younger kids in the fourth, fifth, sixth grade start thinking, you know, hey, I live in West Bridgewater, I live in East Bridgewater, I'd love to stay in play with this program and you know I'm sure there's another goalie or two down the pipeline and and that's what it's always been about developing the future of this program so that it's always going to have something there so but we're very proud of Braden he's tremendous job this year yeah I think having that co-op it kind of made you guys create your own feeder system now you're going to just have people from the younger grades going up and up starting to get a little bit of training from the high schoolers they'll be ready for high school way before anyone else yep absolutely and uh there's a lot of people involved with some of the uh, off-season stuff that they're looking into now, whether it's club hockey, whether it's local youth hockey, uh, there's junior high programs available now, and uh, they do some coaches league stuff over the, over the summer. So the goal for these ca these guys, um, you know, when, when it's off-season is to keep the bond and make sure that these guys still, you know, do stuff together uh, on and off the ice through the next nine, 10 months, whatever it is, so that when we come back to uh, the season next year that, you know, I'm prepared day one for what they're going to bring to the table. And I know Anthony, being captain, will probably take the leadership role on that and keep the connection with his teammates to make sure that, you know, they get the most quality hockey they can get in the off season, um, mm -hmm. getting ready for next year. That's yeah, now that about. COVID's done, it's nice that you can actually have those team building moments again. You really didn't have those right. last year. So we are going to go into our first break. We have had the Webb West East Bridgewater Boys hockey team with us so far. Once we get back from break, I'm going to stop leaving Sean out in the dark. Actually going to ask him some questions when we come back. This is 4D Sports Talk on 1320 AM radio. Call at 508-222-1320 if you want to call. That's 508-222-1320. We will be right back. Hello, this is Manny Dill Carmen from the 2007 World Series champion Boston Red Sox. World champs again. A sports analyst for Nessa. Along with my best friend Jose Diaz, we grew up in the city of Boston, a city that we truly love. Jose and I have always talked about giving back to the youth within our city. Therefore, we created the Boston Athletic Academy to move our passion to action. Our goal is to develop future student athletes in Boston by providing a safe location to offer educational and athletic needs. We are taking the next steps and looking forward for your support to reach our goal. Please visit the Boston Athletic Academy.org for more information. Let's make a difference because success has no boundaries. Hey everyone and welcome back to 40 Sports Talk here at 1320 AM WARA and we have the privilege of highlighting West and East Bridgewater boys hockey, which is the web boys hockey, as you all can see on the screen, on the TV screen. So, moving on to the questions. So, questions for all of you, actually. So, who was your favorite opponent to go up against? Uh, favorite opponent? Um, uh, definitely, uh, I'm saying Rockland, you know. I know some kids from that team. It's a fun game. Both times we played them, you know, pretty fun. Yeah, I'd say either Rockland or Abington, just because the amount of kids I know from both teams playing with them in town hockey, and just like, um, just them beating us all the time over the years, and then to finally uh, get one one win against both of them this year was just huge for us. 
It was just a fun time playing all those guys. It was both those wins during that streak where you guys went on 10 to ten wins to, I believe it was three losses. Was it during that streak? Yeah. Yes. That's awesome to see. It must have just been a massive energy boost during that. So I basically wanted to talk to both of you. You both were captains this year, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask, what was it like this year taking on that leadership role, basically having to teach the other kids who basically joined the team this year? You didn't know eight of them before this year. How was it taking them under your wing, basically getting them ready to continue on in the future? Um, you know, it's definitely a big role. Uh, you know, nothing me and Teddy can't handle, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, definitely just, you know, just show to be a good leader. Uh, just carry the team, you know. Do the right thing, you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, working with the younger kids was just awesome. It's a big role, like, especially our goaltender, getting them ready. Like, at the start of those captain's practice, shooting pucks at them. And then all these younger kids, like the seventh graders, getting them into practice, getting them into drills and stuff, having them practice and get better for the future. Like, it was a big role, but I think it worked out really good. We had no problems, so it was fun. Yeah, so as captains, you guys are basically in charge of getting the team to meld together, ingratiate everyone perfectly. What type of team building exercises do you guys do? Do you guys have, like, team dinners? you guys have meetings after practice? Yeah, we do, like, pasta fest. Yeah. No, just yeah, we usually at the start of the year we had a lot of meetings, you know, like uh, like before big games, like what we're gonna do a practice to get like really ready for practice, you know, and like right when we hit the ice for a practice, we're just ready to go right into the drills. Yeah, uh, I think that's the biggest difference you see between successful teams and non-successful teams. The successful teams make sure everyone feels like they're part of the team, make sure they like, feel like they have a role on the team. Unsuccessful teams don't do that. They basically leave people in the dark. Can't be doing that for your team. Yeah. So, Justin, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask him? Uh, sure. So, lo- looking back, what do you think it takes to be a good hockey player? Uh, to be a good hockey player, you know, definitely just got to be a team player, you know. Definitely got to have a, you know, a strong bond with the players on your team because, you know, that really helps. Um, just putting the work on the off season and during practice and, you know, just grind. Yeah, uh, similar to what uh, Sean was saying, definitely uh, team bonding, like knowing your guys out there, uh, preparing for the season, like in the off season, always skating, try to hit the weight room, and then showing up hard to practice, like practice how you play, that's how they say it. And uh, when the game comes around, you just got to be skating all the time. And uh, yeah, like he also said, being a team player is huge for the team, you know. Yeah, basically putting the hard work in, having humility, making sure that you make sure everyone on the team is just feeling comfortable. That's for sure what you should do. But Anthony and Sean, I'd like to ask both of you, over the last couple of years, obviously, Sean, you are a senior, and then Anthony, you are a junior. So three years for you, four years for you, Sean. How, what do you think the biggest difference between your freshman year of hockey, where you're training, your mindset basically, compared to now is? Oh, the difference, uh, well, freshman year, you know, you're small, and you know, you kind of just look up to the older kids, and you just... You know, play your role as that freshman kid, you know, during practice, fill the waters, get the box, you know. And then now you're you're a senior and you just, you know, you remember that feeling when you were a freshman, you know, and just like, it's just a crazy feeling. You're like, wow, I'm a senior now and it's my last year, you know. It goes by fast, actually. Yeah. Fast. Now, when you're standing in the spot that you were watching yeah. people stand before, yeah. it's just a crazy sight. Yeah. It uh, is. I mean, uh, the big difference, just like freshman year, exactly like Newman said, like you're young, you're new to the team, you know, you're just going to be that, like whatever a captain tells you to do, you're going to do it because you want to be in that spot someday. And uh, and just like uh, grinding, like hitting the weight room, always practicing, like trying to get better Like for those years that you're going to be out there on that uh, first or second line doing what you're doing and scoring goals for the team when you're older. You know, it's just a lot of preparation and uh, – a lot of hard work you got to put in. Yeah, would you say that you learned a lot through your past three years and your past four years? Yeah, I definitely would say I learned a lot. You know, we went through a couple of coaches. Now with uh, Coach Rico, you know, one of the best. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but definitely learned a lot. You know, through those four years, definitely. Yeah, I uh, definitely learned a lot. Like Sean said, going through a lot of coaches. Like I feel like we really found the right coach. Like coach in the past. I mean. There was there was some good coaches out there, but like, I mean, not really like the best fit for our team. And I feel like we really found that uh, the past two years with Coach Rico stepping in, and uh, our assistant coaches, Coach uh, Steve Bradbury and uh, Coach Pat McKenna. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been a good uh, 
year this year from like the not so recent success we've had in the past so yeah yeah so Anthony and Sean you obviously talked about you learned a lot from coach what would you say the main message that coaches preach this year has been in the locker room uh definitely character you know so you know if you, everything else is secondary you know characters first always right yeah I'd say it's definitely character like on and off the ice especially off the ice like showing that you're a part of this team. You're representing both schools. Do it the right way on and off the ice. Just make sure you're doing the right things. Yeah, it's obviously easy, to co- or not too, too easy, but it's easier to coach just a good player in a sport. It's harder to actually coach a good person. That's one thing that really good coaches do. I, pre- I got to give you respect for that, Coach, for sure. Uh, thank you. I'm very fortunate I have a, a group of great kids. Um, so that makes it easier. But these guys are right. You know, We treat them as student athletes. Student being first, yeah. athlete being second. And, you know, I tell them all the time to make sure that they represent the hockey program uh, and their schools, you know, on and off the ice. And f- for the most part, when they are on the ice, they represent themselves very well. You know, we're very low in penalty minutes as a team. Um, we have great sportsmanship throughout um, games that get very competitive. Um, you know, they have their moments. They're hockey players, right? Yeah. That's part of the game. But um, I know, historically speaking, that this team has come dramatically far and a long way from, from years past with on-ice antics and, and off-ice antics. So, yeah, you, you're always proud of a win. You're always proud of a successful season. Um, but I'm, I'm more proud of the fact that we've got good men, and, and that's, that goes a long way with me. Yeah, Coach, I think you preaching character has just brought the maturity level of your team just up so much more. Obviously, during the break, I thought Anthony was a senior already. Kind of tricked me. A little mature yeah, passes Yeah, I, I thought so, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, of course, Anthony is a junior. Sean, though, you are a senior. I wanted to ask, did this year have a little bit of special meaning to you, knowing that it was your senior year? Uh, yeah, definitely. It was really special, you know. Last year of high school hockey, just want to, you know, make it just, you know, a good year. And it definitely was, you know, great coach, great players. Just couldn't ask for a better year. You know? Yeah, I think when you're a freshman, you're a sophomore, you're a junior, sometimes you can go to those workouts, you can go to practice, you can be thinking, like, why am I doing this? Yeah, is, yeah. I'm going to be doing this for a couple more years. I don't really want to do this. Senior year, though, you're just saying that you're soaking everything in around you, just appreciating everything because you know it might be the last time. But oh, do you have any plans to play in college or anything? Um, I am attending Massachusetts. They're, they don't have a hockey team. So, I don't know, I might play juniors. Okay. I think, yeah. yeah, there's a bunch um, of adult leagues yeah, and stuff exactly. like intramural you can join yeah. for sure so you don't have to give up on that. It'd be awesome. Then, Anthony, do you have any plans on playing in college yet? So You're obviously a junior, so it's pretty early. So I do play um, high school soccer. I mean, I've had a couple schools reach out to me about that. And, uh, I mean, hockey's still open for, like, something. I mean, I, I do want to play. It's just I think uh, my growth in the game has to get a lot better. But, uh, yeah, it's still open. Um I'd probably want to go to school for sports management as, like, major, I'd say. So, um, yeah, I mean, the door's still open for hockey, and the door's open for soccer. I just haven't made a final decision yet. It's funny hearing a team's leading scorer say that they got a lot to work on hockey. I feel you don't have too, too much to work on, but either way, you'll be fine. What position do you play in soccer? So I play goalie in soccer. You're, oh, oh. You know, that was making a lot of sense now. <laughs> yeah. So don't forget to add in you with a lacrosse goalie last season, too. <laughs> <laughs> Were you actually a lacrosse goalie? Yeah, I mean, I never really played lacrosse. Oh, wow. and my buddies just wanted me to play, so I was like, all right, whatever. Yeah, just, <laughs> Anthony's just an athlete. He loves, <laughs> he loves being in between the pipes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's three separate sports. You slot in a goal just because you want to. That's pretty funny to see. <laughs> so did you only play lacrosse last year, you said? Yeah, it was my first year last year. Yeah. You plan on playing this year? Uh, no, not this year. Uh, I just got to uh, gotta focus on some other stuff, but... Uh, I mean, last year I joined in like three games late, so I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, anything could happen. Anything could happen, I don't know. <laughs> the goalie goes down. Yeah, and I have to call on Anthony, call on a favor, get the big yeah. guns in here. So, Sean, you, I was talking to you earlier about playing lacrosse, right? Do you plan mm-hmm. on playing this year? I do plan on playing this year. You know, I'm just, I played, I, I played my, um, my uh, freshman year, and then they didn't have a team sophomore year because of COVID, and then I played last year. So, yeah, just play 
No, nah, yeah, you know, 100%. You should get that final might season. Well just, might as well take it all in. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that's a great idea. So, Sean and Anthony, I'd like to ask you both, since I didn't realize both of you were multi-sport athletes, do you think having that second sport in a different season really gets you ready for the hockey season, mm-hmm. keeps you conditioned, then gets your mindset right for that? I think it definitely does, you know, playing multi-sports. And then just I, I think it just helps with all, like, that, you know, that hand-eye coordination and stuff, like staying in touch with that and, Keeping the cardio up, you know, definitely helps. Yeah, people don't realize how quick that stuff can go if you really don't pay yeah. attention to it. Some people take a whole off season off from running, then they get right before the hockey season. They realize, oh, I cannot skate as fast as last year. What, what's going on? Yeah, exactly. So, Anthony, what about you? How do you feel having that second sport really helps you with this? So, yeah, definitely the stamina part of it, like especially uh, soccer and lacrosse. Like you're always running, like pra- especially lacrosse and practice here. You're doing uh, some quick sprints, you know, you're working the ball, getting open. And in soccer, of course, like you're always always on the field, like you're going to go out there for a, a big shift and you're going to always be running. And I mean, goal is not like the biggest running part of soccer, but I mean, still, you, you always got to be ready and you still do the same stuff as the players do in practice. So I think it's a huge part of it to get ready for hockey season. No, exactly. It's not like the goalie sits out while the rest of the team runs. You still have to run those laps with them. Yeah, I actually played soccer last year too. Yeah. I, for the fir- well, for the first year of high school, soccer I played for me. I yeah. played goalie too. <laughs> I just said I'll play. You know, my buddies are on that team, so it is a lot of running during practice. Yeah, even though you are the goaltender sprints and stuff so yeah no 100 percent. everyone has to be conditioned yeah. on that they want to go in no goalie situation at the end of the game you need that goalie to be able to run across the field that's pretty funny that both of you when you just had the first times playing those sports you just chose right to go to goalie you with the cross you with soccer it's pretty amazing to see so we are about ready for our second break of the show we'll be back in a couple minutes we have the web boys hockey team that's west east bridgewater we have coach Mike DeRico, Anthony Patetti, and Sean Noonan with us right now, the captains of this team. We'll be back after this break. If you want to call in, it's 508 222 1320. That is 508 222 1320. Thank you. Hi, this is Megan Chase of Jack Conway Real Estate. Jack Conway has been providing top quality real estate professionalism since 1956. I take personal pride to ensure that my clients are happy with the services I provide. It is my job to make sure that you are fully involved and fully informed and have all the information to make the right real estate decisions for you and your family. Please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to be a resource for you. I can be reached at 774-240-7707 or via email at mchase at jackconway.com. I'm always happy to assist you with your real estate needs. Welcome to Physical Therapy U. I'm Kelly Duggan, Doctor of Physical Therapy and the owner of PTU Clinic. Here at PTU, you're more than a patient and we're more than physical therapy. We offer massage, physical therapy, occupational therapy, personal training, and sport-specific performance training. We treat people and athletes of all ages and all levels of experience. Our beautiful 4,500 square foot facility located at 75 Scotland Boulevard in Bridgewater, Mass. is unlike any clinic you've seen. Our large space along with our new COVID guidelines allow us to treat you in the safest way. Your success in meeting your goals is our top priority. Whether you're recovering from a surgery or you're elevating your performance, we are the right clinic for you. Call us at 508-697-2000 or email us at ptuclinic at gmail.com. Check out our website at www.ptuclinic.com. Back to 40 Sports Talk on 1320 AM Radio WARA. We have the West East Bridgewater Boys hockey team with us, and we are getting a call right now. So we're going to see who that is. Welcome, caller. You are now on the line. Hello. Hello? You are now yeah. live on the radio on 40 Sports Talk. Hey, I just wanted to call in. Uh, you got a fine group of men in there. This is Steve Bradbury <laughs> calling in. That's my hey, assistant coach, coach Joe. Hey, oh, coach nice. Steve. <laughs> yeah, what's going on, coach? Hi, coach. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> just listening. A lot of good stuff. Um, I just wanted to put my quick two cents in about not only the two fine athletes that are sitting there, that conducted themselves like professionals all season long. It's been a pleasure um, to, to, to work with these young men. But um, 
you know, the whole program as a whole is really um, taking leaps and bounds under Coach Mike, and uh, we're 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 headed for uh, a good run, I think. So, I just wanted to call in. I couldn't be there. Um, wanted to let these guys know they have my 110 percent support behind them, and uh, I couldn't be prouder of them for this year. No, nah, Coach, thank you for calling us. Awesome for you to say about your players. I want to ask you before you go, though, would you like to say over the last year how it has been seeing the growth of these two players with your own eyes? Well, I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I didn't catch the, the beginning of the interview um, because I was just getting out of work, but um, I've been involved with hockey since my first head coaching job was in 1986, so that just tells you back how far I've been involved with a lot of young hockey players. Um, this year by far has been way beyond expectations. Um, these kids have just, we started out, what was it? Oh, five and one, Mike, you know, yes. um, and we, we sat back and, and, you know, we're like, all right, let's strip it down and, and see what we have. And, and, and these kids really, really, really stepped up the, 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 the change from, uh, week one to Thursday night is, it's a dream. It really is a dream. And it, it was such a pleasure. I, I'm, I'm honored to even be involved with the program. Um, you know, ho- hockey wasn't there when I was in high school. I went to East Bridgewater High myself. It was moved to, to Proposition 2.5. So, you know, I vowed if I ever had a chance, I'd, I'd get involved. And, and when Mike got the nod, I, 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 I couldn't have been happier to be involved with these guys. They did all the work. We, we, we kind of lined it up, but they did all the work. You know, and 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 it's it's leaders like Sean and Anthony, Brett, Luke, Randy, you know, all, all, all these guys, Jeffrey, they just they believe in the system. They and and the best part about the whole thing was they didn't care if you were a senior, if you were a seventh grader, you were on that team, and and that leaps and bounds. That that speaks volumes on, on what kind of men we have. Coach, I'm so happy you just said that because we have been talking about their character and the team being a family this entire time. It's amazing just to get a second source agreeing with that. Yep, it is. It really is. And and, and I think the sky's the limit. I think, uh, you know, I hope I hope the co-op sticks around for for um, as long as uh, we can keep it together and, um, you know, see these kids. I, you know, it's not the end for these seniors for me. I will follow them. I will make sure, you know, Co- Coach Mike stays in touch with them all. We, we, we'll... we'll, we'll uh, We'll follow their careers along whatever path they take, and, and I can guarantee you it's going to be good. They're all good. Yeah, Coach, I can bet these players just loved you saying that. That was an amazing call. Thank you for calling in talking about these players on air for us right now. Awesome. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, no problem. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, Bye-bye. Coach Steve. See Thanks, Steve. Later, guys. See you. Bye. Okay, that was a call from Coach Steve. That was pretty cool to get there. Did not expect him to actually call in. That was pretty cool. But we are now back from our break, of course. We are with the West and East Bridgewater Boys hockey team. Is the same team, the Webb hockey team. Coach Mike DeRico, of course, Anthony Patetti, and Sean Noonan are the players with us right now, and, of course, the coach. We are going to be continuing on. Justin, before the break, I heard you say you had a couple questions left. Would you like to start us off? Yeah, sure. Um, Is there anything you want to improve on? Um, I think we always want to improve. I mean, that's what makes programs successful. Um, as far as team chemistry goes, as far as character goes, I think um, we, we pinnacled on, on that. Um, but we certainly have some younger players in the system um, that we would like to uh, see them develop more um, and, and grow and maybe come up with uh, some unity, like I said earlier, in the off season to make sure that going into the in-season that, that, that it's there. Um, any of the juniors and sophomores um, that we had play uh, big minutes for us this year, um, I'd love to see them work in the off-season to prepare for next year. Um, but we'll have those discussions with those players um, and, and give them kind of a guide on what to work on between now and next November. Um, but, yeah, there's always room. You always want to improve. You always want to improve. Yeah, as we talk about the younger players, we, of course, talked about the goalies earlier. You have three who are sure. already all being trained for high school as eighth graders. Are there any other younger players that you see a little bit of potential in right now? So just to backtrack a little bit on, on that and leading into the younger players with potential, um, we're graduating three seniors this year, all right, Sean being one of them. Um, but Randy Pratt, um, who's a West Bridgewater student, 
and Jeffrey Young, who's an East Bridgewater student. Um, these uh, Coach, three. Coach, another call. Another call. So let's we'll, take it. You want to come let's right back it. to that after this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's see who's going in. Welcome to 4D Sports Talk. You are now live. Hi, how are you? Doing pretty good. How are you doing? Good. I got a question for the uh, head coach. Got a question for the head coach? Okay, let's hear it. I do. So, how did it feel coaching against your son <laughs> last year? <laughs> As your first year coach as EBI. Well, that sounds like my son's voice right there, actually. <laughs> to be honest with you. It is your son. Hi, Steven. So, um, oh, yeah. Steven DeRico, my son, and uh, my other son, Michael DeRico, both were members of the Middleborough High School hockey team um, for four years consecutively each. So, um, I was a hockey dad for eight years um, with the Middleborough High School hockey program. And uh, last year, my first year as a coach, Middleborough being in the South Shore League, uh, we were able to play them twice <laughs> last year. And uh, I was, for the first time in my life, coaching against my son. And um, it, was, it was fun. It was fun because of COVID. Uh, fans, it was restricted fans. Um, so I was fortunate enough to actually be in the arena while my son was able to play hockey, where a lot of parents last year had to watch on Live Barn or had to watch or... Uh, listen from home, whatever it was, you know. So um, I'm always proud to watch my kids do things um, and to have that last year, his senior year, have that bond. It was pretty cool. So, Stephen, thanks for calling in. That was really nice of you, and uh, now everybody knows how I feel about you. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, congratulations on the whole season. You know I, you know I told you that already. Yeah, my, my family has been um, – a tremendous support you know my I have three children and my wife um, Marla has been um, a huge supporter of uh, me even interviewing for the job uh, taking the job at my alma mater and uh, when I told my son his senior year that I was gonna possibly be in the running to be the head coach at a, an opposing school uh, he was the first one to tell me to go for it huh. so I, I do appreciate the family support so yeah, that's great to see supports on all sides of your family. That's really cool. But, Coach, I got you. Got to ask you to be honest with me real quick. When you coached against your son, you throw another play on him, double him in most of that game so he wouldn't be able to brag about scoring anything? No, he wasn't good enough to do that, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, just kidding, Steve. No, um, we, had, we just had a lot of fun. Um, you know, at the game, we uh, we'll, we'll, we won't say exactly what went on between <laughs> us <laughs> during those games, but we had a lot of fun, and uh, no, it was coach, good. It was good. Hundred percent. You mentioned the fact that you're one of the only parents who was actually able to watch their kid in the stadium last oh. year. We were talking about earlier how Anthony obviously played goalie in little league, and now he plays goalie in high school. Then he switched back to obviously playing center, but he did play goalie last year. He, when you took this job, you probably never expected, and like, wow. I'm going to be able to watch my son play a game while no one else is going to see it. No, not at all. We, we, at the time when I was hired, um, did, were we even going to have a season? Yeah. You know, that was, that was even the big question at that point. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think the first game was played until January of that year. Typically, they'll start the first week of December or second week of December. Um, so the season was pushed off, you know, with mask mandates and, and capacity levels or, 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 or no fans at all, if you will. Yeah. Um, so we didn't even know we were going to have a season. So... Yeah, that was a little bonus. I mean, that was a little bit of a bonus, but, um, you know, I, I really feel bad for the the parents that, you know, didn't have a role like I did to be able to be in that arena with their child and whatnot. But I'd like to think that those days are behind us. Yeah, now we're finally out of it. We're finally back to normal. See, it's a lot better now. But, yeah, no, thank you for calling in. I can guarantee that coach appreciates that call. It was pretty great to see a little bit of father-son relationship over the broadcast right now. That was good stuff. Yeah, but. no problem. I'll see you when you get home. See you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, back to Randy and um, Jeffrey, our other seniors. Um, you know, a lot like Sean, um, they were both uh, assistant captains for us uh, as seniors. And uh, two special gentlemen, um, very – unique characters in the sense that they, you know, lead by example as well, and they come with a great attitude, always hustling, you know, there was never any um, any give up by these three guys, and, and I'm going to miss the heck out of them, you know, to be honest with you. I was fortunate enough to uh, have a year with Randy prior to his senior year as his um, youth hockey coach for a midget hockey team with the Bruins organization, so that's how Randy and I actually had our first encounter, um, and the fact that... Um, Randy actually had the choice to come play with the co-op 
or be grandfathered in to stay with the Southeastern group. They allowed that for their seniors this year. And um, I'm glad he made the decision he did because um, not only is he a great hockey player, a great asset to our team, but these guys will be the first to tell you he's a great friend. He's a great friend, and, and, and he's, a, he's a good guy that you know established a lot of bonds. And Jeffrey's no different. Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Young was um, just as special. And then moving down, you know, uh, I can't say enough about my other two assistant captains, um, Luke Perry, Luke Perry, and Brett Peterson. Um, two tremendous hockey players. Uh, two tremendous guys that care about other people and the program. Uh, they leave it all out on the ice. Their effort is incredible. Their practice work ethic is incredible. Um, it's just a, 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 a unique group of these six guys that, you know, were quote unquote our captain's staff. You know, to have six guys in a role like that is it may be a little over the top, um, but we did it because all those guys show that leadership on and off the ice. You know, and then you know we're fortunate enough to have a guy like. Um, Kyle McDonald, who's a junior this year as well. Uh, we have a very young team. You know, we're only graduating three. So, you know, Kyle, who's, you know, we, we brought him in, you know, last year. He played a little defense, played a little offense, you know, this and that. And then, you know, he started out the year on defense. And then, you know, we move him up to forward. Uh, he gets on the second line. And, you know, his points, you know, he doubles his points, you know. Yeah. And, you know, so to, to kind of talk about our junior class, you know, Matt Martineau, uh, another d great defenseman from West Bridgewater High School. Um, you know, that's that's our junior mix. And then we have a another junior who's really just played his first year of hockey this year from West Bridgewater High School, Bryce Layton, who's, who's going to be, a, you know, an impact player next season. Uh, and then we have a, a tremendous sophomore group of players like Sam Hall and Evan Brew and Christian Bates. Um, Caleb Silva is another one just work 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 and, and and wants to you know earn a spot next year more on a you know full-time basis um we have a freshman aiden baldner who was one of our top four defensemen this year you know and, and, and really made an impact on our defensive unit um you know as far as what's below that you know we had an eighth grader that did skate quite a bit for us this year uh tyler henderson um, a bright future, bright future, and uh, you know he's going to grow into his role, and he's also going to be a big part of our our squad next year. Um, but after that, you know, we, we let our seventh graders practice. We don't dress them, um, and I'm sure between that grade and, and whatever eighth graders we were able to practice this year, that that's our future. You know, so as far as any impact players next year from that young, hard to say. I mean, most of our impact players I think are going to come off of our current roster this past season. Um, you know, one thing I will say about Sean, too, that never came up, going back to Sean. Um, Sean, I think, was a natural forward most of his life and, and went back and played defense um, due to some issues, some concussion issues, if I'm not mistaken. And the beginning of the year, you know, we, we said, Sean, you're on defense, you know, and blah, 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 blah. And Coach Steve, you know, a couple games into the season, he was petitioning for Sean to move up to forward again. Um, we waited a game or two, and then we made the move. And I'll tell you, I think Sean moved up to forward right around the time we started winning games. And, and that was it, was it was a great, great decision that we made. Uh, we got Sean's consent and his family's consent to do it. Um, but I think it made a huge difference, and I was able to put Anthony and Sean together on a line and allow Brett and Luke and Kyle to be on a line together, uh, which really was you know catalyst to have those top, top two lines the way we were able to do it. So, yeah. That's kind of how it looks moving forward, if you will. Yeah, no, for sure. Coach, when I heard you talking about your players, you can just tell how much you care about them. Your players right here obviously say you preach character in the locker room. I assume that comes from you having a lot of character yourself. I do. I was brought up that way. Um, you know, I believe in, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. Um, you know, I can be a hard ass. Yeah. I can do what I have to do to get my point across um, when, when the time is right. But at the end of the day, these guys will respect you if you respect them. Yeah. And no, it's obviously hard it's to find. It's important to me that I coach them that way. Yeah, it's hard to find the equalizer between being too hard and being too soft, obviously. I think that you found it perfectly so far. But we are about getting time for our third and final break. So when we get back, we have the West East Bro Bridgewater Web Boys hockey team coached by Mike Dorico. We got the two captains here, Anthony Patetti and Sean Noonan. We'll be right back after this. If you want to call in, it's 508. 222-1320, 508-222-1320. Thank you for listening.
A popular destination, Adria boasts a breathtaking panoramic view of nature in all of its glory in each and every season. Upon visiting their 200-seat restaurant, you will see three distinctive areas. The lounge area includes their spacious 26-seat dining bar, high-top tables, and dining tables, all viewing access to seven high-definition televisions and three Kino monitors. A second area set apart from the lounge offers booths and tables to accommodate every member of the family. The third area, a few steps down and separated from the main restaurant by windows, is known as the fairway room. It is surrounded by a wall of windows offering not just a fabulous view, but a feeling of serenity and tranquility. It is a favorite spot for lunch, dinner, and functions. It is a perfect for a romantic dinner, a casual family gathering, business meeting, or any large group for that special occasion. 65 to 48, Newton North over Bridgewater Raynham, 41 to 39, Chelmsford over Hopkinton, 44, 40, excuse me, 45, 44, Central Catholic over Concord Carlisle, 75, 33, Bishop Vian over Peabody, 67 to 30, Wachusett over King Philip, 54, 36, Reading over Needham, 64-47. Brookline over Algonquin, 77-47. Woburn over Mansfield, 42-37. Springfield Central over Lexington, 58-23. Hingham over Marshfield, 59-39. Lincoln Sudbury over Winchester, 60-48. And Franklin over Braintree, 70 to 43 and now moving on to division two so all the games will be from the first round of the playoffs norwood over dartmouth 54 34 i repeat in it's division two now amherst pelham over westboro 48 38 pentucket over ursuline 64 41 walpole over notre dame hingham 52 33 Whitman Hansen over Longmeadow, 52-23. Medfield over Duxbury, 56-21. Wakefield over Bedford, 45-35. Westwood over Northampton, 42-19. Uh, uh, Canton over Tewksbury, 56-49. Oliver Ames over North Middlesex. 79-36, Foxborough over Na- Nashaba, 56-38, Chicopee over Ashland, 63-37. And now we're moving on to Division Three in girls basketball. All games are from the first round of the playoffs. Medway over Arlington Catholic, 50-23, Dedham over Archbishop Williams, 49-35, East Bridgewater over Bellingham, 49-22. Rockland over Cardinal Spellman, 60-33. Uh, Tantasqua over Sandwich, 53-33. Dover Sherborne over Latin Academy, 56-26. St. Mary's over Stoneham, 78-44. And last but not least, Watertown over Greater Lowell, 53-28. All right, Justin, you want to go next? All right, sure. Okay. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, we still got more, Casey? <laughs> yeah, I, th- I thought it was done. <laughs> so, Norwell over Monty Tech, 67-49. Dennis Yarmouth over Austin Prep, 50-47. Hudson over Belchertown, 56-35. And last but not least, like really, <laughs> Bishop Fenwick over Triton, AD to 41. <laughs> All right, now, we'll right, it, Justin. now now we're going on to sorry boys. about that, Justin. No, it's fine. <laughs> All right, but boys hockey in Division One, Austin Prep five, Falmouth one, Belmont three, Natick zero, in Division Two, Longmeadow four, Alleguin one, Newburyport three, Wilmington zero, Plymouth North three. Encore Crystal 1, Division 3, Danvers 6, Southeastern BP 1, Hopendale 
for Middleborough 2, Darkett Tigersborough 6, Matthew 3, Girls Hockey in Division 1, Austin Prep 11, Ursuline 0, Hypen 6, Mansfield OA Foxborough 1, St. Mary 7, Wayland Weston 0, Abington 4, Marblehead 1, Bishop Freeham 8, Arlington Catholic 2, Pope Francis 5, Quincy North Quincy 4, and, and Division 2, Andover 4, Franklin 0. All right, Justin, we all good for you? Yep. Sir? I'm okay, done. I'm going to speed through boys basketball right now as fast as we can. We got MIAA Division One BC High defeated Lynn English 82 to 43. And following that is War, uh, Worcester North beating Everett 66 54. Central Catholic over Hingham 79 to 42. Beverly over Haverhill 87 to 50. Springfield Central over Cambridge 77 to 60. Brookline over Newton South 79 to 62. Catholic Memorial over Atterborough 66 to 62. Franklin over Durfee 60 to 39. Continuing on with MIA Division One, Newton North over Wesley, sixty-four to fifty-one. Westford over St. John's Prep, forty-one to forty in overtime. Uh, Needham defeated Methuen, fifty-one to forty-one. Winchester over Natick, fifty-six to fifty-five, one-point game. Wachusett defeated Bridgewater Random, seventy-five to fifty-five, and Taunton defeated Concord Carl, sixty-four to fifty-nine. Move on the playoffs. MIA Division Two, we had Mullen Catholic over Nasset, eighty-five to thirty-six. Agawam seventy-three, Sharon sixty-six. Agawam with the win. Walpole defeated Foxborough 73 to 70. Leo Minster defeated Newberry Port 69 to 53. Skitchwood defeated Revere 80 to 41. Pembroke over West Springfield 60 to 40. Wakefield over Pope Francis 67 to 56. Mansfield over Middleborough 73 to 40. Continuing on, we have Shepherd Hill over East uh, Longmeadow 65 to 63. Salem over Medfield 73 to 63. Burlington over Charlestown 72 to 71 in a one point game. Holyoke over Bedford. 60 to 50. Then uh, Drasusit over Amherst Pelham, 59 to 51. Then continuing on for the final division, we got MIA Division Three: St. Mary's over Chelsea, 94 to 60. Norwell over Austin Prep, 71 to 64. Abington over Fairhaven, 53 to 49. Dover Shoreborn defeated Shawshine, 71 to 56. Norton defeated Hudson, 56 to 42. Oakmont defeated Hanover, 65 to 55. Old Rochester defeated Cardinal Spellman, 65 to 55. Watertown defeated Medway, 54 to 39. Continuing on, we got North Reading defeating Greater New Bedford, 69-40. Continuing on, we got Tech Boston over East Bridgewater, 73-48. After that, we got Arlington Cathar or Tanta, uh, Tanta Squaw, I believe they pronounce that, 66-58. Then Archbishop over Gloucester, 77-41. Latin Academy over Sandwich, 76-59. And finally, New Mission over Bishop Stang, 56-46. We have now finished these scores, and we'll get back into this interview with the web hockey team. Got about three minutes left. We'll see... Do you want to finish a question, Casey? Uh, yes. Uh, so, <laughs> Coach, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background? So, I graduated from East Bridgewater High School in 1988. Uh, baseball was my sport. Uh, I played two years of college baseball. And as uh, I've always had a passion for the sport of ice hockey, when my kids were born, I got involved in youth hockey. And that's when uh, my old uh, high school buddy there, Coach Steve Bradbury, and I Got together uh, with my boys coaching youth hockey at Brockton Youth Hockey. Then we went to the Bruins Youth Hockey Organization. We were with the South Shore Eagles Youth Hockey Organization. Um, I actually established some friendships uh, with some of the players that are on my team now and their parents. Uh, and when the job opened up, um, that's when it all kind of came to fruition for me. Uh, but like I said, my, my big sport was baseball. Uh, I coached high school baseball for a few years, Quincy High School, Middleborough High School as a, as a JV and a freshman baseball coach. Uh, and did little league baseball for many many years, um, but the uh, the you know the road turned a little bit toward ice hockey. And uh, as soon as uh, the job opened up, and you know having some high school experience with baseball, I wanted to uh, look into the option of you know doing something to uh, get this program back where it needed to be. And here we are today. So no, one hundred percent, coach. That is great to hear. So what what were your pregame rituals? Uh, just to be curious. <laughs> I, I'm going to let the boys talk about anything yeah. that went on when I wasn't in there. The only thing that I used yeah. to do is I'd go in there. Um, I, I wouldn't rah-rah them too much. I would just let them know, you know, this is this is the job at hand. Uh, you guys are capable of doing it. Uh, I had a thing with posting quotes on the locker room 
uh, each each game to kind of motivate, uh, along with the starting lineups, etc. And uh, but yeah, I'll let you guys talk about some of the pregame stuff you guys used to do because I would be uh, off to the side, kind of preparing for the game in my mind more than anything. Are we talking pregame like when we get to the rink or like just any, anything? All right, so at home, I like to have like a little snack, like probably like a PB and J or peanut butter <laughs> fluff. Um, I gotta fill my waters, pack my bag. I was going to have a water bottle with some energy uh, squirt in it uh, and, you know, make sure my sticks are all set when I get to the rink. Um, then we go warm up and then just do some stretching and then just get dressed. Yeah, that's, ba- that's basically it. Uh, usually mine just starts when we show up to the rink, get stretching, get the music blast in the locker room, getting everyone ready to go and uh, suiting up. Like half dress, go watch the game up before, like getting the getting the mindset ready to play, and then come back in the locker room, wait for coach to come in, and then get ready to get on the ice. Yeah, who'd you guys play for music before the games? I gotta know who that was. So, I mean, there was a lot of I don't know. We we usually played like '80s rock, to be honest. Yeah. Like, yeah. Would right. Enter Sandman by Metallica be one of them? <laughs> I I like uh, that song. Um, <laughs> no, I don't I don't I don't think so. No, actually, I don't, I don't, so. I don't think so. Oh. But, uh, there was a lot of. We we usually have the same like like pl- pregame playlist every time. AC, yeah. yeah. ACDC. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's great to hear. Then we are about ready for the end of the show. It has been a great interview with the West East Bridgewater Boys Hockey. Of course, Coach Mike Dorico, Captains Anthony Patetti and Sean Noonan were the guests today. Amazing job, you guys. Would you like to give any final shout outs right before we end this? Um, just thank you for having us today. Thank you. Uh you know, just hockey's been just High school hockey has just been something super special for me, you know, especially this year. And thank you, Coach, to that. And, yeah. Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. Yeah, we appreciate all you guys. You guys did great today. <laughs> like, this is awesome. Yeah, man. well, thank you for having us. And, uh, you know, if you ever would like to have us back again, we, we'd love to. It's been a great experience. And uh, more importantly, we have a future with this program. And uh, thanks to uh, the two guys in here and a lot of other people that might not be in this room right now. But Webb is looking Looking bright. So no, 100%. I'm excited to us. see all your guys' futures. I'll be keeping track of that for sure. This has been 40 Sports Talk with Joe Dez, Lucy Cabral, got Justin Ferrer over there, the sports master, and we got Casey. Well, we will be back next weekend at 12 p.m. yet again till 1 p.m. Thank you for listening. This has been 40 Sports Talk. Awesome job, boys. Today's 40 Sports Talk show is supported by PTU Clinic. Visit ptuclinic.com. Adria's Restaurant and Banquet Facility of East Bridgewater. For more information, their website is adriasrestaurant.net. And the Boston Athletic Academy at bostonathleticacademy.org.